P-A-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild, Haitian in the building So, so, so original, got the haters, got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high, cause St. Louis is ready Forget about it, goodbye, hold up, we just saying hi Find somebody, rise up, we face, catch us live, somebody, let's go Good evening <clears throat> Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there, making it dope, making your day amazing and all that. We got some new information, y'all, that just came out a few hours ago. Wanted to share with you guys because this is some uh, shocking information. And and the reason why it's shocking is what's being said, okay? So we got to get into some things. We got a lot to talk about. As we always do. So come on in. This is some very interesting information on this one particular tragedy that we have been covering uh, for the past few weeks. And, or, you know, for the past week and a, yeah, about a week and a half now. So correction. Week and a half now. But nonetheless, we have some things to talk about. And I know that there's like this new thing that's breaking. I'll I'll address it here in a second. Because honestly, I don't think it even matters to be completely, completely straight funky with y'all. But I'll explain that in a little bit. It pertains to another story that I'm sure everybody's going to be jumping on and running crazy with it. But we already heard that story before. And it's already been covered 17,000 times. So I digress. We got to get into some things, and I appreciate you guys for checking out my pop-up videos. I will say that, too. Okay? Thank you so much. So, before we get into everything, please, I'm just doing some catch-up. You know, there's there's a lot of short stories out here that I wanted to give you guys, you know, some updates on that don't need to be seven hours long in a live. You know what I mean? So, do me a favor really quick for this particular live. Hit that like button down below. Crush it. Make it scream out your name. That would really, really mean a lot. And, of course, do not forget to hit crush destroy that subscribe button you know your boys working hard out here in these streets today i just gave you three stories before this show so yeah gave you plenty of content to check out throughout the day take a listen to etc uh in between these lives and all that okay and i'm sure we will be doing more pop-up videos over the this uh, tomorrow and the rest of this weekend as well. So be on the lookout for those, okay? Anyway, we have got to get into some things. We got some things to talk about, y'all. And we got some new, <clears throat> some new updates over the mass tragedy that happened in Louisville, Kentucky, at a bank that took the lives of five individuals. All right, several people have been were hurt in this in this tragedy. But there's been something new. Obviously we we you know just a few days ago, excuse me. Just a few days ago. Sorry, I had a frog in my throat. Just a few days ago, we learned the identity of this of this assailant, of this gunman, of this monster by the name of, and I, I'm pretty much going to say his name once for this show, but his name is Connor Sturgeon, okay? He was an employee, a current employee of the old National Bank, okay? I want to make that abundantly clear. There was no indication. The parents even talked about this, and we're going to see this in this article here uh, uh, very shortly, but they even said, that he was not on the the chopping block. He was not about to get fired. In fact, he was still a current, he was still currently an employee of that bank. He just went in there and wanted to do some really bad things. And how do we know this? Well, because there's a 13-page manifesto. Yes, I said it. 15 page manifesto that he wrote 
And even when you look at the the just the top three reasons, you see it in the in the title. <clears throat> you see it in the title. Okay. Excuse me. Man, oh man. Okay. In the top, you see the three reasons. He had 13 pages in which he explained the three reasons. I'll just make that abundantly clear. Not 13 reasons why. Okay. This ain't this ain't no Netflix movie. Okay. Or Netflix show. Okay. 13 page manifesto. Three reasons why he went on this tragedy, where he went off and did these terrible things. Okay. Now, if I misspoke, I misspoke. I'm I'm just trying to correct myself. 13. Okay, guys, for those of y'all in the nosebleed seats. All right. So he gave three reasons why he went and did this thing. Okay. Now, the reasons, though, to me, clearly point out that something is not right. It's very odd to me. I will say that this is a very odd situation, very odd manifesto. And, you know, it's funny because speaking of manifestos, I have other questions, well, I'm gonna, which I'm going to ask here in a second. OK, or I'll ask in a little while. But let's get into this article, OK, because this is very odd. OK, so it says motive for the for the massacre. Louisville Bank. Monster wrote a chilling 13 page manifesto laying out his three reasons for this spree that he went on. Okay. One was to prove how easy it is to buy a gun. Another one was to highlight America's mental health crisis. And the second was so that he wouldn't have to live anymore. If, that, if you get my drift, you see the title. I have to use these code words, unfortunately. But he wrote a manifesto, guys. We were all wondering, sitting there wondering, is he, did he leave something behind besides the, 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 the voicemails and the, the letters that he left for his roommate and his parents? He actually did write a 13-page manifesto. Pretty insane. Okay, so let's get into this because this is strange to me. Very, very strange to me. Given the fact that we already know how this person, what, how he grew up. He was a star athlete. He was popular in high school. Highly respected for his athletic a- athleticism. Then he goes to this work, to this job. And he's a, you know, he goes to college, he he goes to college, he graduates, he goes to this job, and he completely changes. He's a completely different person. And his three reasons were because he wanted to show how easy it is to obtain a firearm in this country, to highlight this country's mental health crisis, America's mental, mental health crisis, and so that he could no longer, no longer be here. He wanted to lose his life by gunfire. It, it's still, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around all of this, okay? I still am. And to me, this screams something ain't right with this guy. Something obviously was wrong. Something was off. So going into this article, Louisville Bank Monster wrote a chilling manifesto before slaughtering five senior executives at the branch where he worked, okay? In a 13-page manifesto, okay, he describes his goals before the horror at the downtown Old National Bank, where twenty-five-year the 25-year-old live-streamed this actual tragedy on Instagram as he took down coworkers at their morning conference. So he said he, he named three key points in this manifesto, which I already read to you before, but I'm going to say it again, which, he, which, which is now this manifesto is in the hands of the police. One that he wanted to take, 
take his own, he wanted to erase himself. Two, he wanted to prove how easy it is to buy a gun in, in Kentucky. And he wanted to highlight a mental health crisis in America. Now, I know I said it before, but I'm saying it again in his own, I guess, in what they said in this article. Now, this is some very important information. Now, we learned this before, but it is pretty wild to me, okay? This was a legally purchased AR-15 assault rifle that he purchased six days before he entered this bank at 8.33 a.m., where he was met by a friendly uh, woman colleague at the entrance. He told her, you need to get out of here before he tried to pull the trigger. But as we already know, because of him not really having a, I guess, not having a whole lot of experience with this rifle, having a whole lot of time playing around, messing with it, and learning how to use this doggone thing, he forgot the safety was on. He also forgot the cock, the actual rifle. So it wasn't even ready to go off. So he pulled the trigger, didn't go off because of those two different reasons. Turned, he turned the safety off. He cocked the gun. Then he aimed, pulled the trigger, and severely injured that woman. She's one who didn't lose her life. She's one of the lucky ones, from my understanding. Still in the hospital, from my understanding, right now. Then he walked into that conference room where everybody else was. And he unloaded on them. Caused mass tragedies. And that only lasted less than one minute, y'all. He walked in, talked to the front desk person that was right there at the front door, pulled the trigger on her, went upstairs into the conference room, pulled the trigger on a whole bunch of people, came down. That was less than one minute. Then he stood there. And he waited for 5 to pull up. So he was chill. And he waited. And then, of course, he lost his life due to gunfire exchange between himself and the Louisville Metro Police Department. Just a quick reminder on all that, all the tragedy that happened that, that, happened that, that day. And again, this happened in less than one minute. And we already know all this footage. We saw the body cam footage and everything. It is, it's, it's, it's harrowing. I mean, it's, 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 it's a nightmare to even think that this stuff was really, is really a real thing. Okay? So we already know it was unloaded. Safety catch was on. All right? Now, again, the people that lost their lives again, all right? It was Juliana Farmer, Tommy Elliott, Joshua Barrick, James Tut, and a mother of two, Deanna or Dina. I don't know how that one's pronounced. No disrespect, but I think it's Dina Eckert. Five individuals lost their life, okay? So... We already know about the exchange of gunfire between two cops and himself. He lost his life. He joined the bank. Okay, so the, okay, so this is this is the part right here that I found very interesting as well. Right here, I'm just highlighting it so you guys can see that Sturgeon's family revealed the commercial development specialist had mental health problems and was on medication. So he did have mental health issues. Well, it is clear. Let me just say this to me to, to you guys really quick. It's clear to me that there was a mental health crisis going on with this individual. All of them. You're not thinking correctly. I would say you're not mentally balanced when you're thinking about taking a gun, taking a weapon, and walking into a place and unloading on a bunch of innocent lives. Obviously, something's not right going on mentally most definitely that goes without even without a question okay but let's continue here 
Because these are some key points that we didn't hear until just now, until just recently. So he joined the bank in 2021, but executives were reported to have lost confidence in him as he struggled to fit in. Now, what's interesting about that is that you got a guy who's out here. He was the he was a big time athlete in high school, had a whole lot of love and respect. He goes off to college, graduates, gets a job, and he's having trouble he, and he's having trouble fitting in. Something's not right. Clearly, something's not right. Why would he have a hard time fitting in? I, I mean, maybe it's an age thing. Let me just say that too. Maybe it's an age thing. Maybe because he's 25 and everybody else is maybe late, maybe 40s and up. They're all past that age of being young and wanting to go, to go out and kick it and pick up girls and stuff like that, right? That could be it, you know? But also at the same time, you got to remember, he went and he was highly revered, highly respected, popular kid in high school. College happens. He goes to this job at 25 years old and he's not fitting in. It just seems strange. Okay? It does seem a bit strange. And, and Soybean goes, you know, uh, struggle to fit in, boo-hoo, smallest violin. And I hear you on that. But it can also explain where he is mentally as well, at least the way I see it. That if he's somebody who's got that charismatic vibe in high school and then he graduates and then, you know, say seven years later, he's almost like a completely different person. Either something traumatic happened to him or there's something going on internally that caused him to suddenly lose that flair or something because because to me i go that doesn't make sense to me that seems a bit weird you're the popular kid and suddenly you're not your coworkers aren't aren't vibing with you something's not right okay i don't know that but i do think that there's a lot of people that go through things after high school, uh, experience harsh realities of the world, or they experience, just have traumatic experiences in college as well, or just after high school, that drastically change a person. They, it can drastically change a person. It could. But at the same time, I do find it a bit, it's just interesting, okay? Because, you know, CN, you're right. It's not that simple. It really isn't. Mental health and also mental health ain't either. It's not really a paint-by-numbers situation here, right? So it is a bit odd. And we are all complex individuals for sure. But let me uh, open, let me get back into here. So let me just go back to that. So he started the job in 2021. Executives were, uh, had reported they lost confidence in him because he was struggling to fit in. However, this part is important. However, his family's attorney has told the Daily Mail that he did not face losing his job. I think that's incredibly important to hear, too. So instead of it being a disgruntled ex-employee or a person that was finding out that he was about to lose his job, just lost it and then went in there and unloaded on a whole room of, of uh, ex-colleagues, that's not the case. Something happened. Something went off with him. And he did this no matter what. There was no thing. The, the, well, let's just say this. Him getting fired was not the was not the inspiration let's just say that i have a a, a comment thank you so much miss Estr mrs estrada for the for being a member for the past 10 months i do appreciate it uh she says i'm i'm about to grind um, um, wait 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 i'm about to ground grind not working with four friends some people who are kings in school have rude awakenings 
when they become just a number. It's not high school. You know what? That's exactly what I'm trying to say here. That maybe he came through, he did his thing, and then, you know, he he was popular, he was, you know. And then reality sets in when you go into, into, to, into the work world. And maybe it wasn't as easy. Or like what you just said, he realized he's also just like everybody else. At first, maybe he was this unique flower. Went out into the real world and realized, damn, there's a lot of unique flowers like me. Dang, that could be it too. Losing your mojo. Feeling like you peaked in high school type stuff. That's a possibility. That is very well, that could very well be the possibility. But again, it may not be so black and white, right? S Dubs, thank you so much. S Dubs in the house. Love you, Pascal. Mental health in US in the USA needs government funding. I do agree with that big time. I do. Okay. I really, really do. But I do think that we do live. I do think that we it's it's out here. We are realizing about mental health. We are starting to acknowledge that it exists, but it's it's tough, man. It's really, really tough because a lot of people are scared to step forward and just say, hey, I need to talk to somebody or I just need help. Whatever it may be. Like you guys said earlier, it's not... Is not that simple a lot of times, which sucks. And hopefully we can find a way or help find a way by talking about it, by talking out and saying these things. And maybe eventually it will become more of a thing where become be, be pushed more into the forefront of, of, of our society. Okay? But let's continue on. However, mid-discussions with bosses... The University of Alabama finance graduate bought the AR-15 in a, in a state that does not require any form of firearms permit for eligible adults. And there's a lot of states that are just like that. You can carry without a permit. You can carry without them papers. There's plenty of states that are just like that. So he could walk into any gun store and just buy it right off the rack. Right off the doggone rack, y'all. Additionally, where's my mouse? Additionally, there are no Kentucky laws prohibiting residents buying a gun if they have mental health disorders, violent misdemeanor convictions, domestic abuse-related restraining orders, or anyone with substance abuse disorders. None of that. Like I said, anyone can walk. I'm not saying anyone. But it feels like practically anyone can walk off the street, walk off the sidewalk, walk right into a a, a gun store, and buy it right off the rack. And there's a lot of states that are like this. Under another Kentucky law, the firearm will now be auctioned off. That same firearm that he used will be auctioned off to the public by state police effectively putting it back in circulation. Crazy. Now, the family responded to the policy in a statement shared with this article on Thursday, saying this, the search of family was aghast to learn Kentucky law mandated the uh, assault rifle used in this horrific event last week would be sold to the highest bidder at public auction. The family, in conjunction with the LMPD, Louisville Metro Police Department, and the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the ATF, is working vigorously to ensure that the assault rifle is legally destroyed. And the first step in this process occurred Monday when the ATF took possession of the assault rifle. We genuinely appreciate the assistance of both the LMPD and ATF in this regard. This tragedy is yet another indication that meaningful, common-sense gun safety measures must be enacted. 
We respectfully urge the uh, Kentucky State legislator, le Legislature to lead the way by changing Kentucky law to remove the gun auction provision. And we're going to go on to that next piece here in a second, but pretty interesting, okay? Pretty interesting indeed. Uh, thank you, so, thank you so much, S Dubs. We do have mods in here; they're in the house, but uh, I appreciate that, okay? But yes, pretty interesting stuff. So that same gun, that same rifle that took the lives of many, many people that were part, that was a part of a mass tragedy could have been thrown out into an auction for someone else to obtain. No disrespect, but that's absolutely insane. And where's the logic in that? I don't know. Burn it down. Melt the, melt the metal. Turn it into something else. You see what I'm saying? Destroy that weapon. That's just what I think. There's plenty of AR-15s to be bought out here in these streets. Okay? Why put it on auction? That's just insane to me. Okay? So, again, we knew that he had a roommate by the name of da uh, Dallas we uh, Whalen or Wallen. Okay? He was 24. Who said he had no idea he his close friend was planning the atrocity or that he had bought the weapon from a local dealer. He had no idea about the possession of this weapon or his plan. But later, he later received a note from this monster indicating he was going to open fire in the bank, a law enforcement source told CNN. This monster wrote a letter, a, same, a similar note to his parents. Additionally, this monster left a chilling voicemail to Waylon who you met at college, saying he felt suicidal and planned to take the life, I got to use these code words, but here it is, take the life of everyone at the bank. This is apparently what we heard that police dispatch audio revealed that, that whole thing. Pretty insane, guys. The audio also revealed police were approached by this monster's mother, and younger brother at the scene after the after the rampage. So again, the family also issued a statement later saying no words can express our sorrow, anguish, and horror at the unthinkable harm our son Connor inflicted on innocent people, their families, and the entire Louisville community. We mourn the loss and, and that of our son. I, we mourn their loss and that of our son, Connor. We pray for everyone traumatized by his senseless acts of violence and are deeply gra grateful for the bra uh, bravery and heroicism of the L LMPD. While Connor, like many of his contemporaries, had mental health challenges, which we as a family were actively addressing, there were never any warning signs or indications he was capable of this shocking act. While we have many unanswered questions, we will continue to cooperate fully with the law enforcement officials and do all we can to aid everyone in understanding why and how this happened. And even his roommate said it was unknown and surprising to Dallas um, as everybody. And this is what the, his lawyer said. So they said mental health issues, that he had a history of mental health issues. But then, you know, what's, what's strange? Okay, so, and he wrote this thing out saying, hey, this is what I'm planning on doing. Here's this 13-page manifesto on what I'm planning on doing. Now, the thing is, is we don't have the manifesto. That's not out yet. They're just giving us the, uh, the bullet points, for lack of a better term. They're just letting us know what he was trying to do. And those three things are, are, are a bit odd. 
still are a bit odd. Okay? Elon, thank you so much for the five. Just because I appreciate it. I appreciate you too, Elon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the five. But as we see this, this is odd. We have so many other manifestos that we've seen from other mass monsters, haven't we? And not once have we ever heard someone say something along the lines of this, proving how easy it is to get a gun, highlighting mental health in this country, and oh yeah, I also want to do this other thing to myself. Never have I ever. If this was a drinking game, I'd be drinking right now. Never have I ever. Well, actually, no. I wouldn't be drinking right now. Right? I forgot how that game goes. But you know what I'm saying. This would be weird. This is odd. It's odd. To me, this shows that this individual is, ha is having a mental break. So I'm going to go and take a, a bunch of people's lives to be the example of how messed up this country is, in his opinion. That's some scary stuff, y'all. That's some scary, scary stuff. Because I guarantee you, I'm sure in that 13-page manifesto, he thinks that he's becoming... A martyr. That he's sacrificing himself for the betterment of this country. I guarantee you that. Why would he lose his own life just to prove a point? Why not just talk to your local, you know, local hired, uh, uh, local elect elected officials? Why not go become a representative of your, of your town, of your state? You see what I'm saying? Why not do all those things? But instead, he said, I'm going to do these things because I'm willing to take the L to prove a point. No matter what. No matter what. In his mind. He thinks he's doing something big. He really does think he's doing something big. So I'm just trying to get back to the article. Now, this is another part that I think is important and for us to see too. Okay. Now, the the family, which is what they said in the the statement that I just recently read, but here they say the family's attorney, okay, told the Daily Mail, this, this article, that, that he was suffering from depression and he had a history of anxiety and was receiving professional mental health care as well as medication. The lawyer also added that the family has been told their son was, was not facing the, the treat of termination at work. So, his family feared he may have suffered from CTE as a, as a result of high school basketball of his high school basketball career that saw him get hit in the head so many times that he had to wear a soft helmet during games. He also played football too. And they they they're not even forgetting. They they, they forget the football cuz you can get some serious head injuries from football too. I'm still wondering about basketball. I mean, yeah, you can catch an elbow or two, but like, was he really getting slammed in the head that bad? But they're claiming that it could have been CTE. Let's continue here. According to the lawyer, Connor, okay, had concussion issues, which have always been a concern to the family. To so there is a question in their minds, this could have played a role. The attorney said the medical examiner's office had tested his brain during the autopsy 
and that it, it will take six to eight weeks to determine if he suffered CTE, a rare condition that can be caused by repeated concussions and result in aggressive behavior. According to the live stream, which has not been publicly released, but was described by a city official after the tragedy, the woman at the door. Oh, after he, of course, he aimed the, at the woman at the door, which we already talked about, and of course, sprayed fire at fleeing bank workers. So now they're saying that this could have been straight up CTE, and it could take six to eight weeks. Let me just say this. No matter what, if this was CTE or not, this should not have happened. This is still a monster. This is still somebody who did a very, very bad thing. Now, I don't, I don't know if you guys remember this, but it was a couple years ago. Because this, this makes me think about the CTE. There was a, a story about, if I remember correctly, an ex-NFL player. And, and, and I could be wrong, so please, please correct me if I'm wrong. But there was an ex-NFL player that drove off to a, a friend's house, if I, if I remember correctly. And he took a gun and did, took the lives of many people in this house and then drove off into the woods and then took his own life as well. This was a couple of years ago, okay? Is it Hernandez? Aaron Hernandez? Hold on. Is it Aaron Hernandez? No, 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 not, not Aaron Hernandez. That's, that's another conversation in itself. Not him. There was another, like it was an ex NFL player or something like that. I forgot his name because this is just me saying the shooting from the hip here. You see what I'm saying? But he, it was a football player, he, if I, if I, or at least an ex football player went off. He was at this house and it was like a friend of his or something like that. He went in there, took the life of him and maybe somebody else, and then he ran out into the woods and then took his, his life as well. And they were claiming CTE at that time as well. They were pushing CTE. This is why this whole thing happened. And I'm not sitting here saying that CD, CTE doesn't exist, but clearly whatever happened to Connor, okay, I'm going to say his name, but whatever happened to Connor during, the, during his high school time, obviously if it is true, obviously affected him because he was already having, as they said, he was having a history of depression and anxiety. And he was receiving professional mental health care as well as medication. So it does make you wonder, did this happen? Did the professional mental health care, medication, the depression, the anxiety, did that all happen after all these concussions? Or was this happening before the concussions and maybe the concussions made them worse? Just curious. Hold on, I see somebody... Karen Klein, it was a doctor that cut him off. Who? That's what I'd like to know. I'm trying to remember. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm trying to remember. Real talk, I'm trying to remember. Hmm. Junior... Let me type that in. Hold on. Hmm. I don't. Hmm. I don't remember this. I don't remember this. The guy's name It's not him. I will say that it's not that guy, but 
Um, I just don't remember. If I remember, I will uh, I will throw it up on the uh, in the in the comments section after the show. Okay, Philip Adams. Maybe it was Philip Adams. Hold on, that sounds more. Yeah, hold on. Yes. Yeah, I think it is. Yep. Yeah, cornerback Philip Philip uh, Adams. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He went. Yep. Yeah, he uh, he went in and he did, he took the lives of six people, and then he went and he offed himself. Yes, that yes. And there was a whole conversation about CTE and all that stuff. Yes, 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 yes. Hold up. Let me pull this pull this up for you guys to see, too. Blamo. Yes. Autopsy of ex-NFL player Philip Adams. Yes. Took the lives of six people. Then he, like, I think he's like, he drove down the street or something like that. I'm just trying to remember exactly what he did. Okay. But he did what he did. And then he drove off and then he took his own life. And everyone was sitting there. We were all trying to wonder, trying to figure out why he did what he did. And then people started to say it was CTE. And then they were saying that he was showing, yeah, like showing unusually severe CTE. And this is the reason why it caused him to do what he did. Now, when we go over to this conversation, and yes, I agree. Uh, Cyan, yeah, lots of y'all are hella smart because I don't, I didn't remember any of that. <laughs> and I remember reporting that story a long, long time ago. Okay. It feels like eons ago. All right. But yes, that is, but that's some crazy stuff. So if that is the case, I'm wondering, I'm wondering this. I'm very interested to see what's going to happen when they do the, 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 the more thorough autopsy to see if, CT is involved just to see if CTE is involved with this, with this monster. But we already know that if his 13 page manifesto, I mean, obviously no matter what manifestos, especially when they're, they're written clearly when they're written by mass monsters that are trying to do mass tragedies out here, let's keep it real. Clearly, something's not right in that particular person's head. So we can already put that, we can already just leave that on the table, okay? But the fact that he was saying it in that way almost seemed like he was trying to say, hey, almost godlike. Like he was a martyr. I am here to sacrifice myself to prove positive. Show you guys proof positive how easy it is to get this gun, how, how, e how, how messed up you guys don't care about people who are struggling with mental health issues and how there needs to be more focus on that. There needs to be more programs and whatnot, more understandings of those things. And then also I'm going to, you know, I'm going to sacrifice myself. But here's my manifesto for all you guys to understand where I'm coming from. I'm a genius. That just seems a bit martyr-ish, don't you think? Now, I get it. There's plenty of things that we need to talk about when it comes to gun control, how, uh, someone being able to obtain a gun, how some states are running around here. You can go around with a gun that you legally bought, but without any papers or permits. They, there's no background checks, really. No thorough background checks for getting specific weapon, weapons and all that. I mean, it's pretty, pretty crazy to me. Absolutely crazy to me. But to put your own life and the life of many others on the line just to get your point across is absolutely bonkers to me. Absolutely bonkers. Now, we got to talk about something else here. Because as we see, okay, and again, they haven't brought out the, the, the manifesto. The manifesto has not come out 
yet. But there is, but they, but we do have details at least. We at least have three reasons why he did what he did in this 13 page manifesto. He gives out three reasons why. But let me say something really quick. You notice how quickly we got this? We got this pretty quick, week and a half, right? Wouldn't you agree? We got this pretty damn quick. It's been 10 days, a week and a half, y'all. But remember what happened at the Covenant School? That parochial school in Nashville, Tennessee, where three nine-year-olds and three adults lost their lives as another monster walked in throughout the school opening fire on anything they could get their sights on. Do you remember any of that? That was only a few weeks ago, y'all. And guess what? They also said during that press conference that there was a manifesto written by the monster. Her name or their name is Audrey Hale. Remember, they said there is a manifesto. They said they found books, notebooks filled with stuff, like 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 as if they walked into uh, 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 the 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 bad guy from Seven's home. Just a whole bunch of whole bunch of notebooks, like these, like these composition books, filled with writing. And they said, we, there is a manifesto that was written. In fact, they said something like the, the, the quotes from The Shining or something like that. They did, they did give off like a, a few hints. But guess what? We have not heard anything about that manifesto. We have not seen the manifesto. Where's the doggone manifesto? And why haven't we seen it yet? I think that's a bit odd. Don't you? And and, and here's this. I'll I'll say this too. It doesn't matter to me. I I don't care what that person, like, I don't care what that person's agenda was because clearly it's going to be an unhinged agenda. It's going to be coming from a place of darkness or a place that we probably will never understand because we're not in that mental capacity, if that makes any sense. But why have they not given it out? Why have they not put it out there? Are they scared that this manifesto is going to ignite more hatred and more violence out here in these streets? Is this manifesto that moving? That's one thing I don't get. I get it. You know, I understand that she is uh, uh, transgender or he is transgender and all that. I get all that stuff. And they're worried it could spark more transgender people to do X, Y, and Z. But there's plenty of regular cis, let's just use cis white males, for example, cisgender white males that have been out here writing plenty of manifestos. And those manifestos have always come out. Or at least we know a little bit of something from those manifestos. Exhibit A right here. So why haven't they said anything about it? Why haven't they? It, I think it's weird. Unless the manifesto is written in the a, a whole bunch of notebooks like this, then that's insane. And I get it. It could take time. To read through all that. But it does make me wonder. Why is that being put on the hush hush? And we already got this in 10 days. And to me, even so, this manifesto is not right in the head. He clearly is having mental health issues. Clearly. 
do they think that by them releasing Audrey Hale's manifesto, it's going to ignite more copycats or more angered people? Let me tell you, there's already been. And if it's in the transgender community, let's just say that really quick. There's already been a couple over the past two weeks already. Some have been, some have been prevented. They caught, they were caught before things went down, and some did their thing, did the unthinkable. But at the same time, why haven't we put this out? It's weird. Oh, and no, and I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to say anything in the, the world of, I'm not trying to be anti-trans or anything of that sort. No way, shape, or form. I'm just asking the question, like, what is it that's being said in that manifesto that they haven't revealed, that they haven't released? And, and let's be real. The, this is just three reasons, and they summarized it within this 13-page manifesto. But I, I'm sure that they will be releasing the 13-page manifesto but they gave us bullet points. They gave us reasons why. And with Audrey Hale, with that whole thing that went down, still have not heard anything from what that monster wrote in a manifesto. I think that's weird. Oh, okay, good. I'm like, nah, man, I love everybody. <laughs> I just think it's odd. I love everybody. Okay. So, just something I found interesting, and I wish that we could find out what's going on on that one as well. Because what if in that manifesto there's information that we could find out of maybe plans for something more? Maybe there's more people involved in that. This manifesto, clearly this was a, a solitary situation with this individual, right? With this shooting that happened at this bank. And from what, we, from what we know so far, we haven't heard anything about him having plans to do more damage. It was only for the bank. He only wanted to go into that bank and do that. Audrey Hale had plans to do a whole lot more damage and i'm wondering maybe in that manifesto there's more people involved maybe there's a group maybe there's a chat form that they were involved in that they were in chatting it up i don't know but i do find it odd that that manifesto has not seen the light of day yet at least and maybe they're doing everything they can to comb through it to see if there's any code words or whatever so that they can prevent bad things from happening but it's still a question nonetheless to ask. And that is, why hasn't it been brought out? And what's sad about this manifesto here, just getting back into this, okay? When it comes to this, it's sad. But those two points that he said are very true. Should he have written a, a manifesto and gone off and, and destroyed a, a many people's lives and a community's life just to make his point? Hell no. But those two top things are a real problem in this country. It is very easy to get a gun. And there's such a negative stigma attached to mental health. As soon as you tell somebody that you're not happy or that you're going or you say, I'm talking to somebody, you are uh, saying that you're depressed or whatever it is. 
people are very quick to go, oh, oh man, you crazy. Or it's the, 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 the fear of being judged and looked at like you are weak or that you have lost yourself, right? You've lost your composure. And that's very, very sad too. There should be more understanding, more of this country embracing mental health. Because not everybody has it on point all the time. We all have our moments. We all do. Okay? We all bloody do. So I hope that if you are here, you're watching the show and you're going through something, please talk to somebody. Speak up. Talk to us. Say it in the chat. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what side of the spectrum you're on or what you believe in or don't believe in, all that stuff. Okay? It's very important that we talk and we keep it open. That's also the same thing, too. Talk to the people that you love. Check in on them. Not just because somebody passed away that was a celebrity and now you're going, oh, now I got to call my mama just to see how she is. Now, F all that. Damn all that. You should be doing that already. Don't wait until something bad happens for you to actually go, oh, gosh, I, I need to work on my relationship with my mama. Or like my dad or something, or my kid or something like that. Stop wasting it. Stop. Stop. Start doing it now. And if you have something going on, if you are having a problem, if you're feeling unhappy, it is okay to be transparent. It's okay to tell somebody, hey, I'm not feeling very happy today. And hopefully the person that you're with, the person that you're around, understands and goes, oh, what's going on, man? You okay? And if they don't do that, leave them. <laughs> don't waste your time. Keep speaking up until somebody starts to listen. Because we all deserve good people in our lives and people who can understand how we work. And we're all different individuals and we all work different. We are all different vibes out here. Real talk. And it's incredibly crucial that we waste our precious time with the people that want to waste their time with you. So keep speaking up. Keep talking. And if that person doesn't want to listen, tell it to somebody else. And if they don't want to listen, Say it to somebody else. And you keep going at that until somebody actually listens. But it never should ever go to the, this route where you're causing pain to get your point across. Never. And if you ever feel like what Connor feel, felt, oh, I need to, to point out that uh, America's doing this, this, and this, hey, talk to your elected officials or run for office then. If you're that moved, because what he tried to do is going to be completely ignored. We're only looking at this individual as a monster now, bringing nothing but torment and tragedy. He used the very tool, the very weapon in which he was shunning, in which he was talking down at, to cause the thing that he was talking about in his manifesto. We got to prevent these things. Oh, it's so easy to buy a gun. See, no one cares about mental health, yet you are dealing with mental health yourself, a mental health crisis yourself. And instead of going and doing the proper thing, talking to somebody, and then maybe speaking out loud, going on chats and, and, and having conversations and talking to more people and spreading that new knowledge of how you learn to drag yourself out of that dark hole, you decided to pick up a gun and take a whole people's lives with you. That does not make any sense. That makes absolute zero sense. Jeff H., thank you so much for the five. In a day and age where many don't 
even make it past their birth canal. Yeah. Always be thankful you're alive. Do good things with your life. God loves you. I agree. Thank you for that, Jeff H. Absolutely. But it's kind of hypocritical <laughs> what he did. And what's sad is we're only looking at what he did. And if he was still on this planet and he didn't do what he did, and he got out of that dark hole successfully, man, the things he could have done, the things he could have done for his, his town, for his state, and for bringing and shedding more light in a positive light on mental health. But he didn't do that. This whole thing is one big old tragedy. And whether it is CTE or not, he could have stayed out and fought a little bit longer in life before he decided to just grab a gun and do what he did. It's sad, y'all. It's very, very sad. Man. But then again, I keep saying, hey, guys, don't be, share, don't, don't be shy to talk to your local officials. Don't be shy to speak up. Don't. Don't be shy to tell your family if you're going through things. Just don't. Okay? That's where it all gets torn to bits. Hmm. Unfortunately, Michael. Uh, unfortunately, Michael. I'm. I have to. I have to wrap up. But maybe I do a call in tomorrow. Okay. Because it's it's Friday. Maybe I'll do a call in tomorrow. Okay. Um. So let me see what I can do. And it, it, the call in will probably be in the during the day, not at night. Unfortunately. But we will, uh, we will do a call in tomorrow, okay? But I will say this, bang, okay? Thank you, Debbie, for that information, all right? So I appreciate that. But anyway, guys, that is the show. I appreciate all y'all for being here, okay? Wanted to do a quick one. Oh, yeah. There's the other thing, too. Now, everyone's going nuts. Okay, so people are sending me e uh, this email about Brian Koberger and, and, and some more information about Brian Koberger. Let me say something really, really quick. We've already talked about it. The new, this new information that they're talking about, like, you know, news sources have said that he's very misogynistic and rude to his female students. We already talked about that like two months ago, baby. And now everybody's talking about it again. It's like, man, see, my dog concurs. It's like, let's, when they got more information, come on, man, come on. You know, but we're talking about the same ish. We're circling back and we're talking about the same ish. We already talked about it, babies. We've been talked about it, but everybody's starting to send me the email like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, I already talked about it. Go check out my videos. Did like 17 freaking videos on this that subject matter. We already talked about it. And even in fact, the same stations or channels that are talking about it right now talked about it a few months ago, too. So I don't understand why we're circling back to something with that we already we already been done, talked about it. Okay. We already talked about it. The obsession is real. I will say that. But if anything does go off with Brian Koberger that is worthy or worth the time doing a live, trust me, we will talk about it. I'm not stopping. I'm just kind of waiting for the 
June 26th to kind of come here and 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 do its th- fizzy thing. You know, I'm waiting for the preliminary hearing to, to to happen. You see what I'm saying? I am still waiting for that. But I know that people are still kind of riding that story. And uh, for me, it's I'm just waiting for something, a bombshell, you know, evidence, stuff like that, legals, you know, legal documents. I'm waiting for that kind of stuff. Okay. So when I do get some good, big, big bangers of information, we will talk about BK. But until then, we will be talking about other things that do matter as well. Because Brian Koberger shouldn't be the only thing that we talk about on these channels. Just saying. And no disrespect to anybody who makes that kind of content and only that content. Hey, do you, boo-boo. Do you. But I got tired of talking about it. And I'm waiting for more stuff. Okay? So, anyway, I appreciate you guys for being here. It does really, really mean a lot. And uh, yes, happy 420 to every single last one of y'all. Yeah, you all still have a few more hours in my neck of the woods to, to blaze out, blaze on up. You know what I'm saying? It's recreational here in this in, in, in my neck of the woods. I don't know about where you guys are, but if you are doing it illegally, I don't know what to tell you. Good luck. <laughs> Hopefully you're not in a moving vehicle. Hopefully you're in the privacy of your own domicile. Okay, but uh, smoke responsibly. Don't be dumb out here. Okay, and uh, enjoy that 420. And for those of y'all who don't do it, hey, enjoy today. It's just another day on this planet that you're still on top of. Hey, okay, guys. So anyway, do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. That would really mean a lot. Crush it. Do that ting. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Set it to all so you know when I go live or whenever I upload. Okay, I appreciate it. Okay, guys. But anyway, it's time to get going. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.